Hello, I'm Mimi. I'm a digital illustrator and today I want to tell you all about how this YouTube channel got monetized and some tips that might help you grow your own channel. We were forecasting to be eligible for monetization in about five months from now, but then something really exciting happened that sped that process up by a whole lot, which I'll show you all the stats for in this video. Whether you're wanting to start a YouTube channel or you already have one, or you're just curious, grab a cup of tea and a notepad because I'm going to share a whole lot of things I've learned about YouTube and what we've been doing to improve our videos. I started this YouTube channel a year and a half ago in May 2020 to document my illustration journey and was making super simple time lapses and real time drawing videos. In the very beginning I was creating the videos on my own but then my partner Dan started helping me with them because he's a professional video editor and can make them about 100 times faster than I could. We made 20 videos in that style before making the first video that was more informative in May of this year 2021 about how my drawing style had changed over a year. From May onwards we committed to releasing a video every week as much as we could and from then on our channel grew pretty steadily and with our rate of growth at the time we had expected to be monetized in about 5 months from now. If you don't already know you need 1000 subscribers and 4000 watch hours to be eligible for monetization on YouTube and that's a lot. That's like me watching my favorite Disney movie every single day for seven whole years and I'd still be a couple of hundred hours off of the 4,000 watch hours target. We reached 1,000 subscribers on June 26th this year. Watch hours took us much longer to get. We were getting 15 to 18 watch hours a day just before I released the how much money I make online video. When we released that video, it was the best performing video so far and gave us a nice boost to our watch hours. And then YouTube started recommending it to people and everything changed. Suddenly we were getting hundreds of watch hours every day, which we thought surely wouldn't last long, but it kind of did. And it meant that we hit the watch hour requirements on October 1st, which just happened so quickly after chipping away at it for so long. The monetization tab stats are a little delayed, so we had to wait until October 3rd to apply. And it can take up to a month for the application to be reviewed, but ours got approved super quick just two days later. We screen recorded the application process for getting monetized, so we'll show you the technical side of things a little bit later in the video. So in all of 2020, the channel got 35 watch hours. In the first half of 2021, the channel got 577 watch hours. And from July until now, which is October, the channel has had 12,000 watch hours. That's the power of making a piece of content that people like, but that more importantly gets picked up by YouTube and recommended to new people. It's really important to acknowledge how much work goes into a YouTube channel with each of our videos taking between one and seven days to create. And even though we got a big boost this last month, we still spent a year and a half and 42 videos to get monetized, which is a lot of time and energy. I think it's equally as important though to acknowledge that Dan and I have professional skills we can use for this channel that we didn't have to learn from scratch and that helped speed up the growth of our channel. I'm a graphic designer which helps when designing frames and thumbnails and Dan is a video editor which is obviously really helpful for video content. Everyone's journey is different so keep that in mind before comparing any of our stats to yours. So let's talk a bit about content strategy. YouTube wants people to stay on their platform for as long as possible, just like every other platform. So it wants to recommend content that it can see performs well because viewers are watching, liking, subscribing, and leaving positive comments. There's nothing I can do to guarantee all of these things happen, and there's certainly nothing I can do to guarantee YouTube will recommend a video I've made, but every quality piece of content that I put out that my audience wants to see is like an entry into the lottery, and it's just another chance I'll get noticed and recommended. So let's take a look at some things that I think helped this particular video do so well and gave our channel a massive boost. So I asked my audience what they wanted to see and then made it. I put out some polls on Instagram to find out what video content my audience would be most interested in seeing and how they aligned when it came to making money from their art. Turns out more of my audience than I thought would like to make a full time living from their art and wanted to see a video about my art income. So I made a video that I knew would be valuable to my audience. I provided value. I made a real effort with the income video to provide as much value as I could to my viewers because although it was an insight into my income, I wanted people to be able to take away information that applied to them or at least gave them some ideas that could help solve a problem for them, which in the case of that video is how do I make money online for my art. So I made sure I included lots of tips that a viewer could take away from the video. It's a searchable topic. 
As an extension of the last point, because it's a video that looks to help solve a problem, it's the kind of content that people are searching for. People want to make more money, and a lot of artists want to make money from their art, so it's something they come to YouTube to search for. A good thumbnail and title. Once you've got people searching for your content, you want as many of them as possible to click on your video, and just as importantly to watch and like the video. That tells YouTube a whole lot of positive things about your video because it wants to know that if it shows your thumbnail to people that they'll watch the video. I made a real effort with the thumbnail to be really clear about what the video was, it's about art income, to show that I'm an artist with the illustrated details, and to build a little trust by showing a picture of me, which shows people I'm a real human. I added that I was spilling the beans to really show that I was going to be sharing real information and to add an element of curiosity. I personally really dislike clickbait, so I avoid it and instead try and balance being really honest with my titles while also making sure I'm using searched for terms. I use TubeBuddy to optimize my titles and descriptions and find out what terms have high search and low competition to maximize my chances of being found. They're really affordable and have a lower rate for small channels, so I've been paying for their service for a long time now. I'll leave their details in the description if you're starting your own channel and need some help with SEO. And good production value. We've been working on improving our video since we started, and I think we always will be. And in this video, put some extra effort into the way it looked, especially considering there wasn't going to be a whole lot of video footage in it. I made quite a lot of assets like the animated backgrounds, and Dan did lots of simple but effective animations to keep things interesting as much as possible. So making sure the information was laid out clearly and was interesting to look at helped keep viewers watching for longer. I think the combination of these things led to some really good data that put the video on the map for YouTube and gave the algorithm enough confidence to recommend the video to new people. Okay, the monetization process. So what does the monetization process actually look like? For us, it all happened really quickly, but we recorded the process so that you know what to expect when your channel is ready to be monetized with the YouTube Partner Program. Well, first we watched our monetization progress bars go up very, very slowly for a year and a half. You can find these in the monetization tab of the YouTube studio. Then very quickly, our watch hours went up and finally we were eligible to monetize. The stats on this page are a little bit delayed, so it may take an extra day or so for them to catch up with the live data. Once we were eligible, we could apply. To do that, we went to our monetization tab, we clicked on apply now, and that gave us three steps to complete for our application. Step one is to read through the partner program terms, which breaks down how the ad revenue is split, the creator gets to keep 55% and YouTube keeps 45%, and also talks about some other requirements and payment terms relevant to the partner program. So once we accepted the terms, step one was done. Step two is to connect an AdSense account. To speed up this part of the process, it's a good idea to make an AdSense account in advance because that can take a little bit of time. I already have one, so I could click, yes, I have an existing account. I then logged into the account and accepted the association of my AdSense with YouTube, and that was it. It took less than a day to process, and once that step is done, the application automatically starts step three, which is to have our channel reviewed by YouTube to make sure we comply with their monetization policies. This is usually done within a month, but can happen much quicker. Ours actually got processed in a couple of days, which is super fast. The YouTube monetization policies has a list of what they check for when they review your channel. And that's it. Once we became monetized, these are the monetization preference options we were presented with. You need to manually turn on the monetization for your videos and choose the ads you want to show. You can adjust this for all videos or just for individual videos. YouTube shows these helpful images that explain where each ad will be seen. Display ads are always on and sit outside of the video to the top right. You don't get to turn these ones off. You do get to control the others though, so you can choose to show overlay ads, which are the pop-ups that come up from the bottom of screen during a video, sponsored cards, which are cards on the top right of a video, skippable video ads, which are full screen ads that can be skipped, but are normally fairly long, and non-skippable ads, which are full screen and cannot be skipped, which are usually shorter. I personally don't really like the overlay ads and I'm not that fast about sponsored cards either but I think I will enable the skippable and non-skippable ads at the start of videos because they're normal and YouTube plays these ads on a lot of videos anyway, whether you're monetized or not. We might play around with these settings over time. I understand that more ads can mean more money, but I also don't want to impact too much on the experience for you, the viewer. 
Mid-roll ads can be enabled for videos over 8 minutes long, so these are the full screen ads that play in the middle of a video. I don't really like when these play when I'm watching a video, but I do understand that creators put a lot of time into their content, so I'd probably only consider using them on particularly long videos that have taken me a lot of time to create and that share a whole lot of information that probably could have gone into a paid workshop, like this video. So what do you think about ads? Do you use ad blocker? Or do ads put you off a creator's content? If you were monetized, or already are, how do you think you'll use ads? Let me know in the comments below because I'd love to have a discussion and know your opinion. So let's talk about some general video and channel tips. So there are a few things that we've been working on this year to make our videos and channel more interesting so that we could work toward being monetized sooner and we saw some positive results from them. Maybe they'll help your content too or just give you some ideas for things to think about. So what did your channel provide your viewers? I think this question is quite important and has really helped me narrow down what content I make and the angle I take with it. Think about what you want your channel to be to your viewers. What are you providing them and how can you set up your channel to show that? If you can have your banner, playlists, thumbnails and everything on your channel page show what you stand for, then you'll have a better chance of converting a casual viewer to a subscriber. The goal of my channel is to be encouraging and informative for artists. Yours might be to be entertaining or educational or provide an escape. It's something to have a think about. Be the first, the best or different. I heard someone say in a podcast once that to succeed in business, you need to either be the first, be the best or be different. I'm not sure who said it first, so if you do, please let me know so I can credit them. But I think you can absolutely apply the concept to content creation in general. We obviously can't be among the first on YouTube because it's been around for so long now. So to stand out, we either need to be the best, which is quite hard to do, or be different, which is where I think that most of us have a lot to offer. This channel isn't trying to be the best, but we are trying to make really quality content. And for me, my point of difference is being open, genuine, and not keeping what I've learned to myself. I'm certainly not the only one to do that, but I think it helps to understand what makes you different from the content you see around you. Be aware of your own viewing habits. Start paying attention to how you interact with videos and channels on YouTube and be aware of what makes you want to subscribe or not subscribe or what makes you want to keep watching or turn off a video. For Dan and I, we like videos that don't use clickbait and get straight into the topic. Also, if I visit a channel that has content on loads of topics different to the video I've watched, I probably won't subscribe even if I enjoyed one particular video. But if it's clear that they make lots of content on a couple of similar topics to the video I liked, then I probably will subscribe. You're a creator and a viewer, so think about your own viewing habits and it might help guide your own content. Make the first 30 seconds interesting. We knew we wanted to make the first 30 seconds of our videos quite concise. When I write a script, I aim to immediately introduce who I am and what the video is about. The first line of this video was, Hello, I'm Mimi. I'm a digital illustrator and today I want to tell you all about how this YouTube channel got monetized and some tips that might help you grow your own channel. I usually write quite a long intro just to get my thoughts down and then go back and edit it down to be much snappier and just share the information that's needed. A lot of people will have decided within the first 30 seconds whether they want to watch your video or not. What the start of your video looks like is totally up to you. Just consider your audience and what would make them want to keep watching. Try and keep things moving. Something we've been aware of is keeping things moving and interesting by mixing up the format of what's being said and how it's being shown. For informational videos like this, it's by using a mix of footage, photos, graphics, dot points, titles, and anything else we can think of that will support what's being said and keep viewers visually engaged. You might be great at talking to camera and your presentation might be interesting enough to keep things moving. That's just not my strength, so have a think about what you're good at and use that to keep your content interesting. It's generally a good idea to keep giving your viewer new information or showing them something new as your video progresses. Provide value. Just like I mentioned before, to keep people watching, you want to provide some value to them. This applies to content creation in general. What value can you provide your audience? Are you going to provide them with an escape with beautiful, calm content? Or maybe you're going to help them solve a problem like teaching them to draw or sharing everything you know about getting monetized on YouTube like this video does. And keep the outro snappy. To help keep our retention rate a little higher, we've started making our outros really short and snappy. 
When we thought about it, people didn't need a long-winded summary of the video they've just watched, so now I just try and quickly recap if I think it'll be helpful, thank them for watching, and end the video. So thanks for watching this video, I hope it was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye!